G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be installing a winch into an ARB Deluxe Bull Bar. I'm going to be using a solenoid as an isolator rather than a manual isolator switch which you have to pop the bonnet for and we'll be wiring in inbox controls to a momentary on and off switch. So I'll be covering the winch that I bought and why I bought it, comparing it to what in my eyes was the main competitor and the two I was tossing up between. I'll go through the wiring of a solenoid isolator rather than a manual isolator and as well as the wiring of the in-cab controls, which is a momentary in and out switch to the solenoid box on the winch, cable protection, cable sizing, amp drawer of these solenoids and the solenoid isolator, protective cap for the solenoid because it has exposed terminals, the winch install into the ARB Deluxe Bull Bar. We'll cover what the winch comes with, everything that's in the box, and obviously all the weights and costs will be included as well. The winch is the Carbon 12K version 2. It cost me $979. I sort of waited around for a while. I found it on special. It doesn't go on special as often as its main competitor, which is the Runva 11XP. These were the two that I was mostly tossing up between. And there was one factor that really settled it, made it easy for me. And there's a few other factors as well that I think make it better. But the main thing for me was the weight. On the left we've got the Carbon 12K winch, on the right we've got the Runva 11XP. So starting with the weight, we've got the Runva 11XP, which is 24.6 kilos with the winch and the rope, and the Carbon 12K is 19. I've actually measured it, it's 19.22 or something like that. So 19.22 kilos for the Carbon and 24.6 here. With the rope, control box, cables, etc., we've got 23.45 kilos, whereas this is 31.4. So there's seven or eight kilos saved there, right at the front of your car. So the next thing worth noting is that we've got a 12,000 pound pull, 5,450 kilos, versus 11,000 pound, 4,990. Now both of these are plenty for the dual cab ute. My Mazda B250 at the moment is only about 2,600 kilos, but to be five kilos lighter, and give you an extra 540 kilos worth of pulling power. That's pretty impressive. Then we move on to the gear ratios. We got 216 to 1, 228 to 1. So the carbon winch is actually faster. Now this is not a major concern to me at all, but handy to know if you are in the market and deciding between one of these two. Now the rope on the Runva is longer by one meter. If we look at the performance here, and the performance of the carbon. The maximum for the Runva 11 XP is 420 amps at 11,000 pounds. Over here on the carbon, we've got 390 amps at 12,000 pounds. So it uses 30 less amps. It weighs about seven kilos less once you include the rope and cable and control box, and it will give you an extra 500 kilos of pulling force. And one last thing that I don't think is going to make a difference really, but You've got an IP67 winch over here, and then the carbon is IP68. Now these are just different levels of waterproofing, but whether they are accurate or not, that's for you to decide, I guess. The claimed weight, which I can say is as measured, is 19 kilos for the winch and the rope, as opposed to the Runva 11 XP coming in at about 24 and a half kilos. So you get about five, maybe five and a half kilos worth of advantage in the carbon 12k winch against the Runva 11xp and the reason this is so important is because of how far the winch sticks out away from the front axle it is as far forward as you can possibly imagine still bull bar there's a lot of weight in that adding a winch to it it's kind of a ridiculous amount of weight i've already got transmission oil cooler recovery points catch can fuel filters blue safety hub 150 with extra wiring so there's a lot of weight up the front of the car so if i can minimize that especially the further forward it gets then I'll definitely choose to do that. You can often pick up the 11XP for cheaper. It goes on special more frequently. I saw it down as low as about $880. The carbon, the lowest I've seen, it was probably what I picked it up for, which is about $980. So a little bit more expensive. That's not to say the Rumba is no good. From all accounts, it is fantastic. But if you really want bang for buck, then the King's Dominator winches are supposed to be some of the best on the market, bang for buck wise. Now the solenoid, that I'm using as an isolator is a dual battery isolator, technically, but it's the same thing. 500 amps, because we've got 390 amps worth of pulling power and maximum force, we need a big, large solenoid that can break that force. And we don't wanna just go 400 amps. We wanna be well clear of that, so hopefully it never fails us. We don't want the winch to get stuck on. <sighs> 
Can't wait to have suspension on this car. So I'm not installing this at the moment. I haven't oriented the clutch position or anything. This is simply a test to see. So I just wanted to see for my particular bull bar whether it fits. I don't expect it to. So there are those bolts that we need to remove. The cage nuts on the opposite side. If you remove the bottom two, you can tilt the bull bar outwards, fit the winch up, but I think I'm going to remove the entire bull bar. Now the winch with the rope attached is 19.234. This is the control box, the wide remote 3.264, uh, split cori isolator, stubby holder 3.695, solenoid 763, cable 3.811, crimps, lugs, etc. Some extra lugs out to buy, nuts and bolts, and split tubing. This is our protective covering. So obviously it comes with the user manual and maintenance instructions. The winch itself, stubby holder, battery cable, some split tubing. And here is our isolator. So I don't plan on using this, I plan on using the solenoid instead, but I could always have the isolator and the solenoid, knowing that this is a manual shutdown. If the solenoid failed, I have another point to isolate and just leave this in the on position all of the time. But I think I will skip the installation of this, but that's always an option. Oh, strap. <clears throat> Mounting bolts, the fair lead. It's a nice little sticker if you're into that sort of thing. Box number two is our wireless remote. Our control box has a mounting bracket which can mount to the winch, a wide trigger, positive cable. Now all of our insulating cable coverings. With this bracket mount you have two holes here and on the winch itself they are the bolts there but obviously you can move them. So you got that side of the winch, that side of the winch. So there are two mounting points which would be the back and the top depending on your winch setup. So on the winch, this is your clutch. Lift and turn to disengage. This allows you to pull the rope out freely. You can spool out. It actually says on the winch that you shouldn't do this for too long because it overheats the brake, but a lot of people basically don't touch the clutch. They just spool out and spool in. However, if you want to do it the way that they instruct you, then disengage the clutch and it just locks itself back in once you've disengaged it. You can spin it in either direction, doesn't matter. You just have to disengage it and then lock it back in. So you need that accessible. So depending on which way your winch is mounted, you do that just by turning this around. So this is facing an accessible point for you. Normally it's facing up, so you can reach in through the top of the bull bar and twist it. Um, but each bull bar is different, obviously. So what you're looking at here is the bull bar face down. The winch is mounted on its mounting feet. Before we get to that stage, there are two things that you can change about this. You can rotate the motor if you want these electrical connections to be facing a different way. And you can rotate your gearbox on this side where your clutch releases. So with this the way it is at the moment, this is inaccessible, so I need to rotate this. And I will rotate the clutch around. I can sort of reach it by getting my hand in here. So we are standing the winch on the motor end. We've got the gearbox end in the air. If this is the feet, then that is pointing out. So this will be the top. This is where I want that clutch release. Now we want to lift this portion up. There is a shaft coming through here. So we need to lift up and over. Now we want to undo these 10 Allen keys here. So for me, I want to go 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So when I flip it, it will be 90 degrees clockwise. Now, what we want to do is twist this, but we don't lift it, we don't separate it, it'll just twist on the spot. That's all we want to do. So we're just twisting the end plate here and we leave everything together. So when you put the bolts back in, you want to torque them in a criss crossing pattern like this. And then supposedly it's 2.7 Newton meters. I've got a quarter inch torque wrench, but it doesn't even go down that low. So medium strength thread locker on there just to hold it all, but you don't have to crank them. It's quite small Allen keys. So just to show you, it doesn't actually line up perfectly at 90 degrees. So I either need to angle it towards the back or like that. So the handle will be slightly angled out towards the front of the bull bar. There we go. So put these back in, 15 Newton meters, locked tight. All right, that's the 
clutch rotated. So the motor terminals I'm gonna leave on the bottom. That way I can access them through the bash plate. Now we are going to mount the winch. Now if we look at the instructions, it says that the winch goes in an underhand fashion. And there's an arrow on here showing you which way the arrow should be spooled on. So obviously it comes off in the opposite direction. What this means for us is that the motor is on the right hand side of the car and the clutch is on the left hand side of the car. So we'll also be installing this fair lead. We'll have four of these square nuts. These go inside the feet of the winch. Four short bolts. These allen key bolts are meant for the fair lead. These longer bolts go through the winch and the fair lead at the same time. We'll be using two of these on the bottom and two of the short bolts on the top. Got a torque wrench, 16 mil socket, everything done up to 55 newton meters. On the feet of the winch, each corner, we have these slots that the square nut pushes into. So that'll sit in all four corners. Instructions also state that you have six mil worth of steel to connect your winch to. If you're unsure if your bar is suitable, you can always measure it. So we have about 9.5 mil here. I think it's actually a little bit less. I think it moved a bit. I think it was about eight and a half mil. So I'm going to put the two top feet in and then I'm gonna roll the bull bar back. And the reason being is because for this bull bar, I need to put bolts through the fair lead and the bottom feet at the same time. So I'll do that from the front. So the fair lead goes either way. And you can see on this bull bar where the rope is feeding off the bottom. So we wanna have the fair lead this way, going straight onto the drum. It doesn't have to go up and over the fair lead. Make sure you feed this through before you try and put your hook on later. Obviously we're using the bottom holes there because if you use the top holes, you have this sharp edge, well sharp, as far as the rope's concerned. We use the long bolts to go through the fair lead and the winch bracket into the winch with a flat and a spring. So there is a bit of play in how high this will sit, even in the one bolt hole. So I've had to loosen them. I lifted the winch from behind and tightened them again. So now it's not even with that bar on the back, it sits up by about six, seven mil. So you definitely want to force it up as high as you can before you tighten it. Now, before we go and torque it, we need to make sure these bolts aren't bottoming out on the winch feet. So that is what we're looking at there. These are the bottom bolts that go through the fair lead. You can see there is still a bit of room there before they bottom out and they're already relatively tight. So they're all good to torque. If your bolts are too short to get full thread engagement on the top, remove the spring washer Use the flat with Loctite. Now you wanna get them all close. You don't wanna do one all the way to 55, then go to another one to 55. Get them all really tight and then torque them. Then you got even pressure. Now they're at 55, I just wanna see if the bolt has every thread engaged in this square one on the top. I felt a little bit short. So I couldn't get the camera in there, but in the end I actually removed the spring washers because there was probably one thread not engaged and now I have four threads of engagement. The spring lockers are the least important, especially when you're using Loctite. So depending on how you wanna do things, you can mount your bull bar to the car now, or if you want to mount your control box in here, then you can do that before you mount it to the car. I've already swapped the bracket for the control box. It comes like that. So remember, this is the back of the car, bull bar face down. I have a transmission oil cooler that sits here, so I don't think I can mount it there. So I've swapped it around to mount it here. Now that transmission oil cooler also has oil hoses that curve over here, which I'll show you. So this might not work, but this is my first option. And then the cables in split tubing, all protected, land onto here, except for the long one, which goes to one end of your isolator. Now these are black, but they're not negatives obviously, yellow to yellow, blue to blue, it's pretty easy. The thin black one goes to the earth terminal on the motor. The reason I wanna mount it here is because I feel like the motor is already blocking the airflow. By putting this behind it, I'm not adding to any airflow restrictions. By putting it on the bull bar, I feel like it is slightly blocking the airflow. And the control box has the controls. If you ever wanna use the wired remote, you need this accessible, so put it on your bull bar. Because I have the wireless remote as well as the in-cab controls, I actually don't care if this is accessible. It doesn't bother me at all. So this is where I'm gonna try and mount it. Now for the in-cab controls, I actually have a two core that comes out to here for your in and out. So we'll go through all the wiring diagram and stuff later, but 
I ran that a while ago because I was running cables through the firewall. I'll just run that cable in afterwards and connect it. So you take this padding off and the bracket sits on top of that because that has a curve in it that helps with the way the winch is curved. Attach it on, yellow to yellow, blue to blue, red to red, etc. This little thin black cable and the main long black cable go to the earth terminal on the bottom. Now I found these nuts annoying. They tell you to hold the back one, but it's so thin. It's too thin for normal spanners. If you can get something on behind there, it is 15 newton meters. Then we've got our protective covers. I forgot to put my neutral one on, but that's fine. And now we can mount the box. Now I have to cut out the middle of the grill just to fit this. The lower portion of the grill slips underneath the bull bar, but the winch is occupying that space now. So just a note on the grill, I have cut some of it away, but I will be cutting more away because it is impeding on this clutch operation. So I'm going to take the grill out and cut a little bit more away. Now with the control box in this mounting position, it is literally resting on this cross member here. There is no space underneath. So there's the control box and these are the cables tied across here. I got it in eventually. Then I tied the cables across and up towards the battery. So the cables take the most direct route, so they go on the left hand side of this bracket as we're looking at it. And I've had to cut away even more of the grill on this side to get the cables to run through this side in front of this air deflector. The reason being is that negative cable is only just long enough to get to my negative battery terminal. So it was the only real way to go and the positive just comes to where the solenoid will mount. So the solenoid control circuit is wired up here and the solenoid will mount on the underside of this battery bracket because it's the only room I have left. This red core is only powering the solenoid so it doesn't need to be big. It comes from the Blue Sea Safety Hub 150. It goes to the cab, this isolation switch on top. From there it actually comes out to two locations. The common of the winch switch, so that is isolated, that common. And then obviously the feed is fused there through the switch to this solenoid here. The negative goes straight to the buzz bar. Now just looking at the power draw of this solenoid, just flicking it on and off. So according to that it's 0 0.06 of an amp, but I think that's wrong. Um, here it is on a different cable, it goes 0 0.34, 0 0.11, so that's about 0 0.2 to 0 0.25. Now this is a protective covering that I'm making, so I'm just heating up it's leftover plastic from the switch panel that I made. So the solenoid has actives, three actives, and also has a negative there, which could easily be shorted out. We've got our positive here to the solenoid, and the other side of the solenoid goes down to the winch. Because they're all exposed positive terminals, if you brush anything metallic against there, it's going to spark out. So just got this cover here. Then I'm going to try cable tie around. So we've got the feed onto the solenoid, which is here. M6 bolts through here with nylock nuts on the other side so it doesn't vibrate loose. Get our negative here for the winch. Runs straight out to the winch. So the bit we just showed was a feed from the battery to one end of the solenoid. The other large terminal of the solenoid goes to the winch motor. Then we have that negative cable from the winch motor. It's uninterrupted all the way to the battery. We've got a negative cable from the coil of the solenoid and then a fused power cable to the isolation switch out of the isolation switch to the other end of the solenoid and that's what switches that solenoid on and off a solenoid is the same as a relay it's just more amperage okay so i mentioned earlier that i ran in a two core before when i was running cables through the firewall that's when I was doing my reverse camera. So I've run it into the control box. I've removed the control box from its mounting spot for this termination. If you want to know where to wire your in and out controls from, we look at the wired controller port. On the back of it, we have three cores. We've got a red, a yellow, and a blue. So we've obviously got an in and an out. And that's what these are here. So we need to intersect these and join our cables to these. And just looking at the red here, it comes off the bottom. So it's just picking up a feed from the winch, um, but we don't want to touch that side of it. That's just for the wire controller. We just want to connect to this blue and yellow. Now they've got quick disconnect spades or blade terminals. What we're going to do is chop all of them, join these two cables into a new one, 
and then we'll just join all of them together onto that solenoid control. So all I'm doing here is making the terminations, all the cables joined together, and that's basically what it looks like afterwards. Now I'll just put some split conduit on that and it'll be good to close up. So what we've done is run a two core from the cab, the switch, the winch in and out, all the way to the control box. We only need two cores here. A lot of people like to run three and four cores, but you can pick up a feed from closer to your switch panel or even from behind your dash if you want to. So for me, it's from the Blue Sea Safety Hub 150. It's the same circuit that's feeding the solenoid that is turning on and off the main power to the winch. So essentially it is feeding two solenoids because the control box feed those two cores, that's just the solenoid as well. So we've got the solenoid for the main power and the solenoid to the control box of one 5 amp fuse from the Blue Sea Safety Hub 150. So just testing the in-cab controls now, firstly with the isolator off, so the winch shouldn't do anything. And then I'll turn the isolator on, you'll hear the solenoid click in, and then we'll try it again. And now the winch operates. Now you can swap the cores on the back to change the direction, um, whether you want it to go the same direction as the drum would be, in which case the bottom would be out, or if you prefer the top of the switch to be out, you can just swap the back of the switch. And this power test is for two solenoids. We've already done the isolation solenoid. But then while we have the winch powered, we're getting 2.23 amps. And that is the solenoid that the in and out two core cable is controlling. So we have a 0 0.3 resting there. So we have about 2 amps on the winch solenoids and 0.24 on the isolation solenoid. Another thing to note is that this control box, if you take it off, you won't get it back on. So we had it on originally because it was put on with a bull bar, so you have all that leverage. But you can see I've got a mudguard washer on there, and the fact that you can see the thread of the bottom bolt on the control box, that's because I had to completely open that, turn it into a slot, and the mudguard washer is because it is so far down where the bolt needs to go in that it wasn't actually gripping the control box, but now it is with that washer. But just so you know, if you have the ARB Deluxe Bar, and you want to get this thing on and off, you will need to make this larger. It technically doesn't fit, but now that I've slotted that, it is back to its original position where it's resting on the cross member or the support bar on the ball bar. So here's a look at where that control box sits on that support bar and definitely wouldn't have fit in the other spot with that transmission oil cooler. So before you use a winch, you have to run it out until you get to the final wrap and you have to winch in under tension, so the load of the car. The reason for this is it stops the rope from the layer above sliding in under tension between two parts of rope on the layer below and getting stuck there or binding, which is what it would do. Now what I'm doing here is a version of that, but obviously not under proper tension. So I'm just doing it with my hand tension. And the reason is that it was so loosely wound on that it was actually too large for the winch just the way that came shipped so this is just a starting point to get it layered neatly and it makes the diameter of the rope and the drum a lot smaller so this is just a starting point this is not putting it in under tension but it is a hundred times better than what it was when it came shipped just make sure not to catch your hand on the end and be wary of where the end of the rope is before you start winching in and have your hand caught by surprise now to attach the hook we have a circlip on this pin so circlip pliers or long nose pliers and that's just a tension spring loaded clip that you pull out from its sleeve pin comes out go through the rope and then all we really need to do is reapply that circlip under that sort of sleeve recessed area i just got the circlip pliers that go the other way and this way i'm just pinching it in to make sure it's in there this little strap is a hand saver strap just to guide the hook in and double press the buttons on the wireless remote to activate it, winch in, careful of your hands and that is it, that is the winch and the hook. Alright, one more time circuit overview. Our main power is from the battery through the solenoid so we don't have power to the winch until the solenoid is switched. The negative is uninterrupted from the winch to the battery. Our isolating circuit is fuse goes to this isolating switch in the cab 
that goes to the common of the winch switch but it also feeds the solenoid which has a negative to the buzz bar then we've got a two core for our in and out which connect to the solenoid cables our ground for the switch i've just grounded it uh, in the cab actually just off behind the foot pedals now you may have noticed that the illumination light on the winch switch did not work when i pressed in and out it's because it only works on one side of the switch and i've decided to use a dash light I don't need a light to come on when I'm pressing in and out. I'd rather have a dash light that appears. So I've wired that dash light directly to the other side of the switch, which does control illumination. So the winch control box and hook and everything ended up weighing 24.926. I put in about 100 grams of split tubing. The cable was 11 grams, not a lot used, just for the solenoid negative. Uh, 52 grams for lugs, had to fit some new lugs, nuts and bolts, that was mostly to do with the bull bar off screen stuff. Total weight added after I remove this weight is 24.9 kilos, that's the grill and the winch cover plate. Alright guys that's it for this one, that's the carbon 12k winch installed through an isolating solenoid. In the end I didn't install the actual manual isolator and it's just a logistics sort of thing uh, trying to find room for it having to lug extra cables and stuff like that still might put this in one day if i find a good spot for it and i'll leave it in the on position all the time just gives me a fail safe in case the solenoid sticks on but for now i've just gone through that isolating solenoid without the manual isolating switch now a few install notes the control box if you want to mount it on the back side of the motor you will need to slot out those included slotted bracket holes even longer and the reason being is there's a crossbar on the back of the bull bar and it just doesn't quite fit by about four or five mil but it's enough that your bolt you'll never get it started so it can be done you just need to modify that mounting bracket a little bit so we've just seen all the weights uh, the price list will be up here uh, it's mostly already been covered i just bought some more split tubing to cover the rest of the cables and then we have our main purchases like the winch and the solenoid so thoughts on the carbon winch i do like it the way they spool the rope on i feel like they could do it a lot better they don't need to do it under load but you can spool it on a lot neater than that make the diameter of that rope a lot smaller but the worst thing for me was the fact that when you are tightening up the motor terminals they ask you to hold the back nut with a spanner but the back nut is too thin for most spanners i got two different sets of spanners um, shifters and everything was too thick to actually hold that back nut so it'd be good if they included a normal size back nut so you can fit a normal spanner on there i like to use nipex 150s which have a tapered point and even then it was only the very end that i managed to grip onto that nut at the back to torque the cables onto the motor so it'd be good if they could change that around as for the stinger sgp i'm surprised at how little the power draw is i thought it would be closer to two amps much like the winch solenoid is um, pretty disappointing they don't give you any protective covering for it with all these exposed active bolts and nuts there and the worst thing is there's no torque settings so they really should be providing torque settings to let you know how tight you can go i've seen reviews where people have complained that they have easily snapped the bolts there so i was really reluctant to over tighten it but all of that could be avoided if they just gave you torque settings for the nuts now hopefully that wiring diagram made sense to everyone and you can see how easy it is to install in cab controls you mostly just need two cores for your in and out but you do need to pick up a feed from somewhere and if you want your switch to illuminate you will need a negative depending on your style of switch that's the way it is with the seven pin style of switch now i've chosen to use the dash light for the illumination i don't really need illumination on in and out because i know when i'm pressing the buttons so i've just got the bottom light coming on with the rest of the dash lights all right we'll jump to the end screen now and we'll look at the weights and costs for the bt50 thanks for watching and solenoid for isolation purchases so all you really need to do back in go how to wire it through a snolt box on the winch cable it's 11 xp you can awfully 
So one, one last thing that I might, if you can, pin without the manual. So we have 